Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be sharing some dark fiction written by women. Um, I read a lot of women last year, like way more than I normally read percentage-wise of my year, and I've really enjoyed it, and I haven't really made a video talking about like women authors I don't think on my channel, so I thought I'd pick some stuff that's kind of like dark and creepy, um, the kind of stuff I was talking about when I did my review of Mouthful of Birds, um, which you can go check out if you haven't already. So we're just going to jump straight in and I'm going to go through them fairly briefly. So first I have Adele by Lila Samani. Um, this one comes out in the UK in February, so if it isn't already out then it will be out very shortly. Um, this is the author of Lullaby, um, which was a story about a kind of murderous nanny. This one is about a woman who has a sex addiction and her kind of journey across Paris um, in, I guess, almost um, and a sense of her not really wanting to do it but kind of feeling she has to do it and there's a real kind of interesting edge um, to this dark side of female sexuality. And the next one I want to share is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. Now I talked about A Mouthful of Birds as I've said already but I just wanted to highlight this one. Um, it was one of the Man Booker Internationals either last year or the year before and it's just a really creepy tiny little book. Um, I'll read you just the cover because it's one of those ones you want to go in kind of blind so I'll just give you what they give you in the dust jacket. A young woman named Amanda lies dying in a rural hospital clinic. A boy named David sits beside her. She's not his mother. He's not her child. It is a fever dream. <laughs> like reading it is the experience is very um, confusing and twisty and really, really good. I love this little book. The next one I have is Woman at Point Zero by Noella Sadawi. And this is an Egyptian story about women and kind of the trials of being women in the Arab world. Um, it's beautifully written. I love this author's writing. Um, I've read her non-fiction collection also and just absolutely adored it. Um, she's kind of running around this dark side of Cairo and it's just, yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, you'll like this one. Next I have I Love Dick by Chris Krauss. Um, this is a book about a woman who becomes obsessed with a man that she's barely met um, and she's also married so she's sharing this obsession somewhat with her husband. Really dark, really good. Another more recent one, we have Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. Um, this is a story of a family who go to live in a kind of like pseudo Iron Age um, experiment, I think. It's like an archaeological experiment. Um, and there is, um, it opens with the sacrifice of a young girl and it's just very slowly twisting towards um, kind of its conclusion. And it's that kind of book where it starts so strongly bad you have a sense of kind of unease throughout. And then we have The Fifth Child by Doris Lessing. This is a story about a woman who has a number of children, um, four children, and everything's kind of a little bit storybook until she has the fifth child and there's something wrong with her fifth child. And then we have one I absolutely loved last year and that is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Moshveg. This is a story of a woman who um, is trying to kind of escape herself and her life and puts herself in a drug-induced kind of coma um, for a year of her life. The next one we have is one that I feel is quite similar to Fever Dream and that is Die My Love by Ariana Hardwitz. This is a story about a woman and a mother who's kind of falling apart and losing herself to these violent tendencies and these um, really quite disturbing thoughts that are going around in her head. Um, it definitely turns upside down the idea of what a happy marriage is and what a happy mother is. Um, it's again a really short one so you could probably read this one in a day um, if you wanted to. It's all set in the French countryside too so it's got um, a slightly removed sense because I think the author is from Argentina. Yeah so it's kind of displaced from the author and from the characters. Of, yeah it's really good. Next I have an author who you probably know more from Burial Rights, um, which was her first book, um, but I want to share with you The Good People by Hannah Kent. Um, this is one that went around a little while ago and I don't know how many people picked up on it. Um, this is a story of a boy who was born in a remote um, sort of village, um, a, historically, a historical vi village, and they believe that the boy has been changed or taken. They kind of think he might be a changeling or a fairy or something dark and nefarious. And it's about the women who gather around him and their response and reaction to this child. And then next I have The Strays by Emily Bitto. Um, this one I wanted to include, though it doesn't feel that dark when you're reading it. Um, though I think it is. I think when I think back on it, I think it really is. It's about a collection of artists who are living, again, in a kind of commune, like, separated from society. Um, but they have these children who are kind of drawn into the hedonism and the drug-taking and the alternativeness of this lifestyle. Um, I believe it's about the, one of the women who isn't actually there. 
um, who doesn't live there, yeah, Lily has ne doesn't actually live within it and she meet, makes a friend, um, the girl called Eva, who lives within this colony so you get a sense of what life is like from the inside and looking in. And then I have a short story collection, Her Body and Other Parties by Cameron Maria Machado. Um, this again is just tiny little creepy dark stories. Um, the cover one is about a woman who has a green ribbon around her neck um, that the men who meet her all want to unravel to see what happens. And then another short story collection I have Rag by Marissa Mayher. I've spoken a lot about Heartbreaker on this channel so I just wanted to bring kind of Rag to you guys' attention. Um, these are so dark. These are probably like the darkest author that I have on my shelf, I think. Um, they're just kind of like really twisted little stories um, that kind of get into your head. Um, the way she writes and, and the way that she kind of um, makes stories, they kind of kind of fall out um, and in quite short order, which I really like and play with like a single idea. And yeah, if you liked Heartbreaker, then definitely have a look out for Rag. And then I have a novel and that is Veronica by Mary Gatskill. This is a story about a woman who's in New York. She is looking back on her life in New York um, and she was kind of like a bit of a model and hang around with all these kind of slightly horrible people. Um, so it's a middle-aged person looking back on themselves at a very tumultuous time in their life. There's a lot of terrible, terrible people in this book um, and I think it's one of the best drawn, like bad, unlikable female characters that I've read. The next one I have is Wall Creeper by Nell Zink. Um, I know some people don't enjoy this one but I love Nell Zink. Um, this particular one is about a portrait of a marriage that's falling apart um, and it's kind of about all its highs and lows so like all the things within that marriage that keep you together and the things that draw you apart um, and I just love the way she writes about relationships, I find it quite relatable. Next I have one you probably have heard of and that is A Girl is a half Form Thing by Eva McBride. Um, this is the book if you've kind of forgotten what it was, that's the one with a really strange style of writing that almost um, inside your head stream of consciousness so it's really like disjointed and different um, and it's a story of a girl who's um, lost her brother. I think you have to go with this, I think if you're a little bit kind of nervous about it just jump in and give it a try and see what you think. Um, I didn't find the writing style was that difficult once you got into it um, and it is that kind of strange, again that kind of strange sense of, of girls that we that maybe we don't see when we see like princess dresses and um, flowers and stuff so yeah. And then kind of similar to Veronica the last one I want to share is Green Girl by Kate Zambrino. This book so capsulates what it's like to be a woman who does not like herself and a woman who is trying to fit in with what women are supposed to be. There's a lot of shopping in this book when people have no money, there's a lot of concern about appearance and about things that no one else really seems to care about but that our narrator really does. You are simultaneously very frustrated with her and her kind of materialism and um, not pointlessness but almost like her lack of desire for things other than this sense of self but it's also very relatable um, and I think when I read it there were definitely pieces in here that I felt I could relate to without really wanting to. So those are my suggestions for some kind of darker fiction by women. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, I haven't made one like this in a while. Um, let me know in the comments down below what your favourite kind of dark stories by women are and I will have a look on Goodreads and see if I want to check any of those out. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye bye. Thank you.